Hello, Bees Bladers! Welcome back, and welcome newcomers to the channel. I have a brand new petrified fish to share with you guys and gals today, and we're going to get right to it right after I say thank you to my subscribers, thank you channel members, and thank you to patrons, and a special thank you to everybody that comments on every video and hits that thumbs up button. You already know. If you know, you know. It's what helps other people get to see this video. So we're going to break it down, take it apart, and see what it's all about. Um, let's see, for the unboxing knife, I'm going to be using the Petrified Fish PF868, and I just put a video out on this one. If you haven't checked it out, Ooh, boy, you want to check it out. And I do a breakdown, take it apart, see what it's all about. Look how smooth. Yeah, it drops shut. Anyway, let's get in here and see what this one is all about. Now, I would say my first complaint would be that I wish Petrified Fish would put a label on their box. There's no label anywhere. So I always have to label them myself so I know which box goes to what. So, it looks like you get a, a nice cleaning cloth with it, which is very nice, very, very nice. I love these. This is a nice one. This is like the one that Civivi puts out. But there's nothing else in the box in our nondescript, non-labeled box, which, come on, I mean, come on. So check this out. Ooh, that is sleek. The Petrified Fish PFE02 or PFE02. Man, that's pretty sleek, look, sleek looking. Front flipper. Nice and shiny and nice and well centered. Um, it looks like we have a right side tip up only carry, but it is in set, which is very nice. Very, very nice. That's going to be easy in and out of the pocket. I already know. Now you could get this in black, gray, or blue. Okay. We'll have to work on that. See how that works. Wow. Look at that blade. Look at the satin grind. That is gorgeous. Would you look at it? Just look at it. Man, that is gorgeous. No branding, no billboarding on the blade whatsoever. That is very nice. Very, very nice. Let's see how sharp it is. Will it cut? Let's see. Oh, yeah. I'm telling you what, that's that's what I've been getting from Petrified Fish. They are doing their edges right. Look at the grind on here. It is so nice. Nice looking grind on that. Tell you what, so these are running about $41.99 right now. You can get them on Amazon. I, of course, will have a link in the description. Um, White Mountain Knives did have them, but they're sold out at White Mountain Knives. And while you're at it, there are 10% discount codes to all kinds of places in the description of this video. But yeah, this has 14 C28N blade steel. The designer, which I believe is right here on the clip, David Chin. There you go. Prices can change, but right now this is less than 42 bucks, and it's a flipper. Ooh, yeah. Let's check out the specs real quick. All right, we'll get a weight, and then we'll run through the specs in less than 60 seconds. Um, I'm going to say about 2.2. And, ooh, yeah, 2.3. How's that for close? Getting better and better all the time. All right, let's do our specs in 60 seconds. Our total length from tip to tip is 7.03 inches. You have a really nice pointy drop point blade. 14 C28 end blade steel with a beautiful satin grind. Your total blade length is 2.99 inches and your sharpened length is 2.99 inches. Your blade width is 0.72 inches and your blade stock thickness is 121 thousandths. Your thickness behind the edge was 12,000 and trailed up to 14,000 and you have G10 for your handles. Your closed length is, I don't know, I'll we'll put it on the screen. <laughs> your handle width is 7, 0.76 inches right here. And then your closed width right here at the farthest point, 0.89 inches. Your handle thickness is 0.43 inches. It's a front flipper. And we will do a breakdown and see all what's on the inside. And this is the PFEO2. So there's your specs. Now we've already taken a really good look at the finish of it, but I'll give you a nice up closey. Always got to get up and close for that texture vision. Yeah, has some really nice texture. It's not overdone, but you do get a little bit extra from that milling in the G10, which is very unique, very unique. Nice looking pivot. And there's your PF, your petrified fish on this side. And looking through the back, you can see all the way through, except when you get back here, like look about a half, not a half, about a quarter backspacer, G10 backspacer. And you do have a lanyard hole. You can put a big old lanyard through that puppy. But let's see how solid it feels. It is definitely solid as a rock. No blade play, no lock rock. How about our lock up? What are we looking like? 25, uh, yeah, I'd say 25, 30% lock. More closer to 30. And oh, there you go. 14 C28 in. 
And it's the PFEO2. How about that? They did get it on there, but they put it down here. I appreciate that. That is very nice. Now, your pass-through. Yeah. Now, see, I was wondering when I first looked at it. Oh, yeah. I'll show you the action here in just a second. Look at that. Beautiful. Beautiful sharpening choil. Wow. That is awesome. Nice sharpening choil. And there's just enough of a pass-through. You guys already know. You gals already know that I don't like it if I have to dig my finger in there. And it is so comfortable. It's just so easy to unlock. Yeah, I'm appreciating that already. So let's do some quick size comparisons. So here it is thick wise against the QSP Penguin. You can see it has a lot thinner profile than the Penguin. And here is a Kaiser Feist. You see it's a lot more in the lines of the Kaiser Feist thickness. So I'm going to lay this out and hopefully I'll put a knife up here that you guys and gals have so you'll get an idea. All right, so I'm going to put a couple big ones up. This is a new one. You might not have this one yet. This is the Petrified Fish PF868. I just put up a video on this one. You can go check it out. I'm gonna put a couple larger ones up here and then we'll try to narrow it down. And here is the Petrified Fish Beluga. I know a lot of people love the Beluga. You can go see both of these videos on my channel. And here is the Spyderco Pair 3. And I'm putting these up pivot to pivot. And the Spyderco Delica 4. So you can see it's more along, more along the lines of the Delica 4. We're getting closer, getting closer. And what do we have here? There's the CRKT Pilar 3 and the ever popular and ever loved, ever so loved QSP Penguin. Now there you go. Now we're in the ballpark, but it does have a lot of cutting length. What would we say it was? 2.9, something like that. And here's a couple smaller ones. Here is the Kaiser Beg Lighter, Mini Beg Lighter, and the Kaiser Feist. And this is the Kaiser Feist and Denim Micarta. You can go check out that video and this video if you would like. So there you go. Now, as far as deployment, there's not a lot of options. I wouldn't call this a fidgety knife for, per se, but I'm going to back it out for you here. Let's back her out. So front flipper isn't too bad. Let me try it. Let me try it holding it naturally. Yeah. Yeah. Not too shabby. How about? Yeah. There we go. If you haven't tried this, this was a game changer for me. You put your index finger up here and just roll it right around. Flips it right out. It's nice and comfortable. Yeah. How about left-handed? Now, left-handed, I can't front flip worth a darn with my left hand. The action, a little stiff. We'll see if that improves. Now, can I do the over-the-top? Oh, I could do over-the-top with my left hand. How about right-handed? Yes, that's fun. I can't always do that with a front flipper, but yes, it does that very nicely, very nicely. It's holding the blade in, the detent's working well. It doesn't have the strongest detent in the world, but it definitely works. The uh, ergos, let's check out the ergos. My hand, from here to here is four inches, here to here is three and a half, from here to here is seven and a quarter. This gives you an idea. Full, yes, full grip. No hot spots at all. Yep, we're winning. We're winning. It's comfortable. You can really get down. If you're making a hot dog stick or a marshmallow stick, you're in it. You're in it to win it. It's very comfortable in my hand, squeezing it. The pocket clip's not bothering me. The pocket clip's just enough out of the way that it's not bothering me at all. So that's very comfortable. This is going to be a great utility knife. Look at this. For utility cuts all day long. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Liking it. Liking it a lot. Left-handed, it's comfortable. I'm feeling the I'm feeling the clip right here, depending on where I'm gonna hold it. But that clip does hit me with, in the middle finger if you're left-handed, and you can't reverse the clip. So, and now here is one other thing: you could take the clip off, and this would be a nice pocket dropper. I mean, it's a gentleman gentlemanly carry for sure. Nice low profile. That is pretty nice. I like it. All right, we're going to get in here, break it down, and I put everything that I use to do my disassemblies right here on the screen. That way you can check it out. There's a link to all of these things in the description if you want to get them for yourself. So, and also, make sure you get the right size Weeha bit set. If you use my link, you'll go to the right set, and also it works as a great backup bit driver. But this is awesome. This was recommended by me, to me, and now it's recommended by me. But let's get into it and see what it looks like inside here. See how much it may or may not improve. And I'm going to use a T8 in the pivot. Oh, yeah. It came, came apart very easy right there. Very, very easy. And this looks like a simple design. We'll find out. And it shouldn't take too long. 
depending on what we find out when we get inside here. Yeah, I know one of these days I'm going to say that and I'm going to regret it. It's going to be a bear. It's going to be a bear. Oh, okay, check this out. This is pretty cool. So, the pocket clip, you screw it from the inside. How about that? It all comes apart in one piece. That is pretty cool. I'm going to get, I have uh, some pieces of microfiber cloth. I've kind of switched to these. I used to use uh, cleaning patches, but I don't know. I kind of like these microfiber cloths. Kind of privy to them, but I'm just going to clean this off. It's not really that dirty. And you can see it's going to have an internal stop pin right there, which we'll check out. And let's see what it looks like. Doesn't look too bad. Not too shabby. Let's take it off. And oh yeah, nice. We have a D-shaped pivot. Look here. See that pivot? It's D-shaped. That'll keep it from spinning on us. And you see that our ball bearings are facing towards the towards the blade and towards the blade. And I'm going to take those guys out and clean them up. And I don't really see a need to take the pivot out necessarily. Because I think this is going to be a pretty quick disassembly, which is very nice, very, very nice. And if you're watching for the first time and you're not aware of Bee's Blades and Bee's Live at the Hive, oh my gosh, you're missing out. Every Friday night, 8.15 to 11.15 or later, Eastern Standard Time, we have an absolute blast. Bunch of people come in. We always do giveaways and it is always so much fun. We talk about knives. It's the, If you're not familiar with the knife community, the friendliest people, most giving, sharing, caring, friendly people are in this knife community. It is a family. So if you're looking for some awesome people and some new friends, and or if you just want to be entertained and you just want to come in and, and just listen and just check it out, and then Mrs. B's comes on the live with me a lot. You can go check out the previous recordings. Now, I'm going to use a little bit of this KPL knife pivot lube. Uh, let me make sure you can see. I'm just going to put a little bit on here, just a little bit over here. I'm going to put some in here. And then I'm going to put some in here. Ooh, that was a lot. And then I'm going to put a little bit on here. And then I like to use these little swabs which you can also get at Knife Pivot Lube. So KPL Knife Pivot Lube, I have 10% off. There's a link in the description. Go there and get you some. It is awesome stuff. And I like to use this swab. Make sure you can see what I'm doing here. I like to use these swabs. You guys already know. If you know, you know. Get it all luby dubed up. Lube the inside. Go all the way around. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, this one's this one's going together very, very nicely. Very nicely. Uh let's see. And I'm I have KPL heavy that I'm going to put on after I get this in here. Just get these lubed up a little bit. I have some KPL heavy. Oh yeah, this is going together like a dream. Like a dream. Look at that. Just like that. So here's your detent ball. This is what holds the blade shut. And that detent ball, I'm going to put in a drop of KPL Heavy. Get in the hole. It's your home. Get in the hole. <laughs> Get in there. All right. Tried to use too much there, but that's all right. It'll work. Not too worried about it. Not too worried. Main thing is... Let you guys and gals see. Now, see how I'm flat right here? So I'm going to put that flat side up, just like the flat side right here. And wow, is it really that simple? Stop pin's right there. This right here is your stop pin. And that's what's going to stop here and here. It's going to stop your blade when it opens, stop it when it shuts. So let's see how we're going to line up here. It feels like we're going together nicely. Feels solid. All right, let's put our pivot in. Told you it was going to be a quicken. The quicken. I can't wait to see you guys and gals again in the chat on the live stream this coming Friday. So I've tightened my pivot all the way down. Then I'm going to put my two back screws in, which is really cool. You don't have to take the, uh, that is really nice. I like that you don't have to take the pocket clip off, which means you don't have to mess. I'm not tightening these down. They're just in there. See, it's nice. You don't have to take the pocket clip screws out. So that means you're not going to have to Loctite them. Now I'm not putting Loctite on my screws. That's because I'm a knife reviewer and I check my knives all the stinking time because I'm always taking them apart. 
You, if you only clean it every once in a while to clean it, I recommend you use some Loctite. You can use the stick and just put a tiny, tiny, tiny little bit, a little dab will do ya. So are we lined up? Nope, let me tighten it up a little bit. Let's see where we're at. All right, let's tighten up the side screws and see if that fixes the centering issue. How are we? Okay, we're not quite centered. So what I'm gonna do, see how we're off a little bit? Not much, boy, not much. So I'm gonna open it up. I'm gonna loosen all the screws on this side. I'm gonna loosen that one all the way out and then loosen these. All right, now make sure everything's lined up. Now I'm gonna point, I'm gonna push just a little bit the direction that the blade wanted to go, which was towards the clip. I'm gonna push that direction. And then I'm gonna tighten down the pivot all the way. And see what happens here. See how we look in here. Oh yeah, see, that's all it took. Now I'm gonna tighten these guys down. And I'm not cranking them, I'm just, I'm just tightening with two fingers, just enough. And let's see what kind of action we have. Uh, I tightened it a little bit too much, so let me loosen it up just a hair. How's the centering? Centering still looks good. Oh yeah, it's snappy, snappy. So this isn't necessarily a drop shut, but well, yeah, pretty close. Let's go back to the main screen. And we're back. So you can see we're nice and centered and the action is really nice on it. So what do I like about it? Well, it's a nice sleek design. I really like how it comes to that point. There are some times when I really, really enjoy having that extra sharp point. The tip is not too thin, has a pretty strong tip. It's always good to have a strong tip, <laughs> but the action is good for such a super lightweight knife and a lightweight blade. I mean, it drops down really easy, couple shakes and it's in there. The ergos are comfortable. It's a nice, super lightweight knife to carry. Um, I mean, it has a choil. I mean, I don't know. I don't know what negative I would have to say. It breaks down and takes apart. You take apart really easy. I don't have any issues with it. And for the price, what was it? Less than 42 bucks. I mean, man, it's a good flipper. And the doesn't have the strongest detent. I would say maybe it has a, a maybe a medium detent. But you don't need a strong, you don't want a strong detent with a front flipper. Other than that, I mean, it is, yeah, I could, I could see fidgeting with this all day long, especially an index fidget. Oh man. And I know that's not the reason you get a knife, but it's what I do when I'm driving or if I'm typing or something like that with one hand, I use the other hand to play with the knife. What can I say? It's part of, part of my everyday carry journey. So there, there you have it. I, I really like it. I don't have any complaints. Let me know what you guys think about it. You like it? You want one? Maybe in the future? Is it on your list? Tell me what you had for breakfast. You already know. But I really appreciate you guys and gals being here. Remember to live life in the present. Keep a Band-Aid handy. And don't cut yourself.